Thanks for staying with us. Um, it's time to go to the press and see what the headlines are saying. And joining us to discuss the headlines on uh, our national dailies is Mr. Shola Omolayo, Public Affairs Analyst. Good morning and welcome to the program, sir. Good morning, sir. Mm -hmm. Good morning, Nigerians. Happy Independence to you in Arias. Happy Independence to you and Nigerians, too, in mm -hmm. Arias. Okay. Uh, we're beginning today, eventually, with Daily Independent, and uh, the uh, leading story is that federal government moves or removes VAT on diesel cooking gas to crash prices. Uh, on the Tribune, it says federal government introduces tax incentives, VAT modifications on diesel, CNG, others, and um, all that. So, I uh, would like you to comment on that. Uh, removing tax from, from uh, diesel and uh, cooking gas, will it crash the prices? Uh, do you see this as a government's uh, very, very beautiful move? Statements are always very sweet to hear. And... Um and um, policies can be placed on paper, but the implementation will always be the problem that we've been having all time. You won't see any news coming from the government that the people are going to say the place like it used to be in the past. I don't think we're going to have that. You remember some few uh, weeks ago, if not months, that um, the government says to us that the citizen will be buying a, a, a certain kilo of food item at the rate of 40,000 naira. Mm. I want to believe that person like you must have got to your own bag. Maybe <laughs> you have about three bag forty. Never right, seen it at all. Money. Never seen it. A lot of people on the street cannot even certain that they found one anywhere. It's unfortunate. And if you say you are dropping um, a certain rate of um, the government revenue on products or items that is commonly used by the people, what are the major one, which is the primary in the area of electric city? If you are taking it from this side, are we not going to be experiencing it from the other side? You know what Nigerians are going through now? To the fact that People are beginning to move to the streets, protesting, protesting that the issue of ban A, which is an essential commodity of Nigerians, they are rejecting it because it's a hard, hard take for the people. So if you say you're removing, is it not the same gas that those who are hiking the price are complaining about, saying to us that the amount of the amount they are paying for case of gas and powering the electricity is on the high side. Mm. Who is fooling? Okay, so I, I don't know. Um, <laughs> okay, uh, Atiku, let's move to another thing. Atiku seeks rotational presidency, strengthening of electoral laws. Um, Rotational presidency, I don't know how that is different from what is happening here. Maybe what is happening here is not in the Constitution already uh, because we, we know that there is an unofficial, official declaration that there is zoning of presidency. So uh, I'd like your comment on that. I, I think maybe it's because it's not in the Constitution captured that this must be what will happen. I want to believe. Uh, I want to believe for now. I'm not saying that the future, but for now, is an is an idea that is dead before arrival. What is this saying? What makes it differ from the rejection of the tenor allegation that he himself personally worked against in the days when he was in power with his uh, his uh, his boss, the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, in personal, um, the Aremu himself, popularly called. OBJ is a is, is a game is a game player and I, I I think we should be aware that the kind of people he wants to trunk this kind of a game with they are the best player of this game he's a smart guy too um, and a smart old man now that has been in the circle of trying to clinch into power since 1992 1993 during the days of the Abiola uh, 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 um, trying to bring into power 
Brian, you remember very well, he also contest for the presidency there at their primary SDP jobs. And um, the story, I mean, that has become a story for another day. I think the idea is dead on arrival. Political game, playing with the, the, the real game maker themselves, the chess player in personal, Bola Ahmed Tinumbu. Yeah. Just forget that idea. Yeah, but rotational presidency, is that not what is happening now? Anytime, if Bola Ahmed Tinumbu leaves office now, everybody will expect that the presidency will go back to this, the, the, um, the north and all that. But it's not official. Isn't that what he's asking for? That well, Let us make it official. Let's know that if the tenure of a well, southerner, for instance, finishes, nobody from the south should t contest again. We should look for the best of the best within the north to do that and vice versa. Yeah, good idea, you say, and um, is, is understood for equity. But let me tell you this. The issue of rotational presidency a constitutional issue. This idea was promulgated by the PDP. Remember, by the PDP, when they were trying to orchestrate the planning of the next election in 2003. Very fully well that, um, will I say, the president we had then in 1999 was a child of necessity, the political gambling that was put to show, you know, and, and, uh, there are things that is not too necessary to say, not to, so as not to be playing politics in this discussion. The issue of rotational presidency shouldn't even arise if we have a, if we want to grow in a civilized uh, uh, environment that will give us a good deal for the tomorrow. If you understand what happened in the, uh, I think in 2007, 2011, how Jonathan came on board and how he chooses to contest for that position. I think that was an era where we ought to have broken this issue of rotational presidency and try to fit, get somebody that could fit in into that um, um, seat of power. So what we need now is somebody. I know there is no way we can run away from this sentiment because we, the, we the local citizen of this nation, we don't even understand what we want. The kind of leaders we want to put in place when we come into politics we we act so much we anchor so much on the issue of tribalism that is what has eaten into the marrow of an ordinary nigerian that is why when it comes to the time of president um, contesting an, an election the issue of rotational presidency begins to erupt but you don't see that in any other institution that we are working with is in business Whatever you think of, even in sport, we don't even think of that. Sport that brings out all the entertainment world that uh, we, we, we are controlling now. The issue of region never arises. All we want is the best of the best. We talk of whiskey, nobody cares of where it's coming from. We talk of David Doe, nobody cares where it's coming from. We talk of Sonia Adi. In the days of Dan Mariah, who cares? Or the man will be touched from being State. Who cares? But when it comes to politics, we are all fooling ourselves. If I want to include myself, we are all fooling ourselves. Talking about rotational presidency. Why should you be this man trying to direct the affairs of... They don't even take my generation for my hand. This generation, we've taken our own generation. I just hope they will not take my children's generation. That is why I would love to stand and stand for the truth. Okay, um, let's move to the Tribune. They have almost the same uh, stories as uh, the Daily Independent. Uh, but now, um, we're seeing Tinubu leaves for UK on two-week annual leave. Uh, that is on all the newspapers. Um, according to Bayon Onuga, he's leaving for a working leave in the UK. It has to be in the UK to go and reflect on his policies, the policies of this, his administration and um, uh, whatever is happening in Nigeria. He needs to go to UK to do that reflection. I I'd like to know your take on that. Well, I, 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 there's something to say about it. I, I, when I had two weeks, I said to myself, what has two weeks got to do? If he, if he has his way, I mean, the law will permit him. 
why not stay for one month and if that is if you if it's going to have that rest over there because nigeria problem or more now african problem the nigeria problem people will yes we blame him for a lot of things and he himself said that nobody should pity him but on the human angle we should really pity him because he has come into office at this terrible time when the economy of the world is so tormenting and the security of our nation is so questioning and he found himself in this terrain it's not about Tinubu, it's about the seat of power in this country people look at nigeria as if nigeria is one one small state in africa if you wake up and you you check it out it, 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 the, the, the the ratio the population we are having here put it side by side with the population of america you pity the leader you pity the the, the, the leaders that meant well for this nation. But why, why, does, he, why does he have to go to the UK in order to reflect on the policies and programs that he's implementing in Nigeria? I'm just, I'm just my, asking. My brother, my brother, where you are working right now, you come, <laughs> if I ask you to go for a leave, you don't want to go to your town because you will, you will, you will be acting. My brother, Okay, Nigeria are tough for whoever. Nigeria are tough. His family will not even have, let him have rest. His own immediate family. Negotia as a whole. How you could take escape? Nigeria is a place where you will switch off your phone, but your phone will still be ringing. <laughs> That's okay. serious. That's that's serious. But, but we know that um, while he's there, there are still people that will be going to him, that are still going to be calling him, that are still going to be doing all that. If he's, going, if he's going for leave, if he's going for leave, I have no problem with that. But you want to reflect on the policies uh, while you are in the UK, meaning that you want to be on your own to rest and then reflect on your policies. So you, he'll be thinking alone uh, on how to make the policies better and all that. Uh, wouldn't he need some... Um, some expert advice? Wouldn't he need some, some, some people to whisper to him things that may work? People who are not already in his kitchen cabinet, uh, divergent opinions that can make the things work in Nigeria. But he had to go to UK. Like, they have better pillows that will talk to him when he's sleeping. And that's what I do not understand. I'm not saying I'm against his resting. He needs rest, and like you said, even more than two weeks. But what does he need to go to UK to go and reflect on the policies that he's implementing in Nigeria? Maybe that's just coming from Ononuga, not the president himself. When, when, when rain is falling in Nigeria, our network breaks up. It's not, that's our system. Oh, don't, okay. don't blame my network. Sorry. Don't blame my system. <laughs> yeah, it, I think it's the weather now. Okay. Um, two weeks for our president is not too much. It's not, enough, it's not enough. It's not enough. It's not enough. Yes, I agree with that. So, whatever he wants to go and do there, he knows the environment that it's in. When Jonathan wants to take a decision concerning the result of the election, he went into his room and shut his door. The environment, that is what, that is what you think at that time. Because if you are sat in one of their, one of their, 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 their hall or one of his, uh, maybe a, a parlor somewhere, where he has two or three persons. One of these three persons might just change whatever could have happened. You understand it? But thank God, he knew the environment that he could, he could have his, uh, his, um, his, his thinking right. And he went there. If Tinubu feels that Ekote Kwene is the best place for him to go, why not? If he feels that this is uh, I because why not? Even if you think that uh, Afghanistan or Russia is the best place for him to go, why not? No, as no. long as he I knows what he's doing, we won't let him go. Get things right. Okay, yeah, we won't let him go to Afghanistan. Okay. <laughs> Now, um, uh, hire military contractors to wipe off terrorists, Ndume tells Tinubu, laments killing of six farmers in Bornu state. Uh, it, that story is on almost all newspapers. Uh, the, the reps asking, or the National Assembly member asking uh, the president to hire mercenaries to do the killing of bandits and terrorists and all that. Do you think that will work? Is there times... When, when when you hear some things, you just you just you just jump up and then go say jump and pass, jump and pass, jump and pass. 
You see, if you don't, if you don't, if you are not ready, if you are not ready, if you are not ready, you can't get it right. There are things, there are rumors of the past when, let me refer again to Jonathan. We have a clip of video, I don't know if I still have it somewhere, where one, one of the white guys were interviewed and statement were made. My brother, just let's forget that side. <laughs> so, uh, mercenaries, side. for you, mercenaries is not a, a, a good move uh, to bring to Nigeria to do the needful. Okay. Um, how many of them will be coming to Nigeria? Let me ask you a question. That we don't have such a capacity here. How many? How many of them? How many? Is it not the same country that some Americans were kidnapped and permission were given to this, their soldiers to come in? You call them the Marine Force or whatever you call them. Don't we have capacity more than them too? The soldiers... Our military men here have gone to countries to fight war and they came up triumphantly. So what are we saying? Um, there's there's, 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 always, uh, there's always a talk that the, the security agencies are compromised and if the president wants to do something, he has to think outside the box. So if they are being compromised, um, no matter how expert they are, it also means that their experts are doing or sabotaging the security of the country. So uh, why wouldn't you think that mercenaries are good enough? When the Americans came here, they rescued their, oh. their person within w days. Okay. few Let's days, they rescued there. the person. So they had the enough intelligence, which, of course, I'm sure that Nigerians have, the Nigerian security agencies have, but they're not willing to do the needful. Oh, so you are telling me that when those guys come in, they are not going to work with any of the agencies? There's no way you can enter a mass country without getting a signal from the base. You must get a signal, for God's sake. You must. And if there's a linkage in any of this form, you can't get it right. You cannot. You must work with the people on ground. Why is Nigeria getting it all over the world? Let me shock you. Let me shock you. And you might even know this. When Nigeria, when Nigeria took the decision in the days of Babangida, to enter into Liberia and try to uh, and bring in peace in that place. The United Nations never thought that war is going to end easily. That is the first time they could imagine that the black man nation can control things themselves. At which war has the United Nations entered into and they they, they, they ease out the war within the shortest time. Come on, don't trust these guys. Don't so, trust these guys. Uh, so so basically, also, basically you say, you say we should keep doing what we are doing, uh, whether the results are, are, are positive or not. Okay. No, no, no. I don't think we should keep doing what we are doing. What I'm saying is that we should be serious. We should be honest. We should be honest. Do you know the crisis that is going on in the South here? Do you know the numbers of kidnappings that is going on that is not being announced? Abba, we should be serious. Let us know the problem of our security agent. If the Nigerian, if you include the Nigerian police, you don't want to imagine what they can do. Mm. In fact, if possible, they should go and invite uh, 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 DIO contractors for any other European uh, country to come and come and to come and stay in our road there. Do you, do you know even our BIO, they are even worse than some of the uh, things we are going through? Somebody where they stop your motor, go check your own motor, you get uh, the tire, don't, you don't. <laughs> when we're ready, we get things right. Yeah. I'm telling you. Yeah, when we're ready, we'll get things right. There, there was a controversy in the National Assembly. There was a controversy. We're leaving that one now. Where there was a controversy in the National Assembly. Um, where the, the, the House of Reps members were kicking against the national honors, um, the honors that were given to the, uh, the Senate uh, principles of the Senate uh, were not the same that were given to the House of Reps uh, principal officers, and they were kicking against it because they said there was no equity, and it, the law covers that they will be treated equally, Senate and the National Assembly, even though they do uh, some a little bit of difference 
uh, different uh, jobs in the, the National Assembly, but they will be treated, especially the principal officers will be treated the same. So I don't know what your take is on that. Uh, some were given order of the Niger, some were given commander, whatever it was. So that was the controversy there. What is your own take on this kind of controversy? Should that be a problem we will be addressing right now? Reps reject Abbas's CFR, uh, demand GCO and like Aquabius. If I say you should jump and pass, you will say <laughs> I don't want to talk about it. You remember this person? Very important personality. PIP. Go and listen to that song. Mm -hmm. All this title, what does he give to us? My mother in the village don't even know what those titles are meant for. Me said, where are they here? I know what's in the title. I, I take help me. Mm -hmm. My brother. Uh, but the I thing is, the, the thing is, um, the, qu the, the quarrel is that if the law states that whatever is done to the principal officers of the uh, Senate should be done to the reps, um, I, I should know. feel that they're, they're thinking we that they're now, they're now showing that one arm of uh, the National Assembly is greater than the other when it should not be like that. So it will now become like it's a divide and rule thing or a preferential treatment given to another. So for equity, for justice, uh, they are crying out. One arm. <laughs> you say one arm. 200 arm. Instructed disco. These people where they give us life, that they should stop by A not to pro pro uh, proceed. They are listing which law, which arm, which rules. Hello? You are talking about title. What matters to Nigeria? The National Assembly gave an instruction to daily sin. The executive gave an instruction. They first gave an advice. They gave an uh, uh, instruction to daily sin. You are talking of title. So let them not just Minister give the titles. If, they, if the titles are not important, let, not, let them not give the titles at all. Instead of giving higher titles to one group and giving lower titles to other group when it should not be like that. That is the quarrel. It's not about the titles. It's about uh, how it is being given. So you, you choose one side of the National Assembly, which is a bicameral thing, and then you say, we will give you better ones than the other ones. So it just shows that this is how you regard the other one. That is the cry that they're, they're crying. They're not talking about how important uh, uh, titles are or how not important but the treatment or the what the message that that carries which is beyond just pronouncement of these titles that's their that's their quarrel don't you think they, they are justified to do that okay please elementary elementary question and from elementary knowledge man what is important of that title to, to nigerians then they shouldn't give at all it may not be important no, they shouldn't give at all but if you are giving don't, don't give or don't give at all what is the important the money where the the the, the message the christmas message to they sent to their phones were you aware of that the christmas message they it's sent called to prayers their prayers phone. into their inbox that's what they called it that's what the senate president called it i'm sending prayers to your um, inbox um, yes um, we, um, we know um, that um, we know that but um, when um, the president I'm not. I'm, I'm just, let me be the devil's advocate now. Not that I'm. I'm talking for them. But when the president begins to show that the Senate is bigger and better than the House of Reps, doesn't that give you a concern? Because no matter how unuseful those titles may be, it means that there is division in the National Assembly, and it is being facilitated by the president. That is the cry. Don't you think it is a valid cry? The the awards are not important to Nigerians. They should not even give it. But if they are giving it, shouldn't they give according to how it is stipulated by the law? You know, consign me. <laughs> okay. I know. I I... That down. Sorry, I said, uh, pressure to one. Mm. You know that guy. Mm. Everything that there is. So this one too, you know, consign me. Mm. Okay. Um... They like they, they, they make <laughs> number two. Okay, now change you on number four. <laughs> then number four, they carry out number five. You know, even thank her. You know, thank God. No, the person here fights for the position where they don't give a talk. I beg you.
second base. Okay. Now, um, there is also this story on uh, the, the Tribune, uh, in fact, in all newspapers, saying uh, many missing as boat carrying over 200 passengers sinks in Niger State. Sources say 160 feared dead and all that. So the only people they were able to rescue are 10, and the rest are either missing or found and buried. In fact, another newspaper said 150 have been buried already, which means uh, another maybe 100 of them are still missing, whether they will be found or not, whether any of them will be alive or not. But, but what is your general take on the fact that we always find these mishaps in Niger State and so many other states, not just uh, in the north, sometimes in the south here as well, and what would you say to the level of uh, um, or the, 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 the stage our water transportation has come to? What do you think needs to be done? What is your general take on these avoidable uh, disasters that happen to our people? It's so painful when I hear about death. Death that is not called for. It's not an old age death. Hmm. We are not fighting war. We are not in a situation of um, um, a polluted um, environment that suddenly we cannot control. These are controllable um, EU, and uh, it's just unfortunately it's just unfortunate that we care less about life anymore. This is not the Nigeria I used to know when I was much younger. It's unfortunate. I imagine in my head how would a government be operating a system and such an occurrence is going on how could a boat a, a boat pick up 300 souls in a drive not a ship not a ship yeah a boat what is the length of that boat for god's sake we just care less about human life in fact when i listen to news these days even with due respect to your person, you see new newscaster talking about death. There's no emotion anymore. <laughs> Outside this country, you see the white man. Whenever they got they got to a portion of an accident, you see the passion. You see the drive of the emotion in their looks. But here, it's just like every not normal news. You just hear his newscaster. We we announce. Um, there's an accident that happened in uh, so so and so so location. Three people dead. Doesn't make any difference to us anymore. It's unfortunate. We are we going to be holding responsible the government, those who ought to see to the life of men. I want to say this: the Lagos State Government is trying, is trying, and I believe some other governors could learn from some of the ways. Uh, this honorable governor, like every other governor I've done, is really tri uh, striving hard to make the environment safe. Okay. It's tough, no, no, it's difficult, but it's a pity that we have lost souls. And I really sympathize with the family of those who are grief now. There's nothing to say that to say the government should think about life. Yeah. Life. True. Life. Life. Go to outside this country. They cherish animal, not to talk of life. Animals. I remember a time there was a fraud somewhere. The president of America, the person of Donald Trump, took up a flying boat and went to console, I mean console people in such an environment. I never traveled before but for television and they watch out <laughs> when you notice that trap. <laughs> Well, this is where we have to drop this morning. Thank you so much for being a part of our, our show and uh, helping us uh, make sense of the headlines. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. And thank you. Yeah. We've been talking with Mr. Shola Omolayo, a public affairs analyst, ex-raying the newspapers. We'll take a break now, and when we return, we'll be looking at uh, our first hot topic. Stay with us.